Good morning, everybody. It's nice to be here with you. Today I'd like to discuss with you the critical role that transportation plays in the evolution of human consciousness and the pivotal role it will play in transitioning us to a global society and hopefully biosphere consciousness in your children's generation. First contact. We've had two seminal events in the last three years, which I believe signal the long end game for the great industrial revolution based on fossil fuels and fossil fuel transport. The first event, July 2008, oil hits $147 a barrel on world markets. Prices across the supply chain soar, including transport. Purchasing power plummets. The economic engine shuts down. What I would like to suggest to you is that that was the great economic earthquake of the industrial age. The collapse of the financial market 60 days later was the aftershock. Connected, but we're not going to the point of where we need to go. Why has this happened? We are in an end game. We've reached peak globalization based on fossil fuels. It's about 150 a barrel. The reason, the entire civilization is based on fossil fuels. It's not just transport. Petrochemical fertilizers and pesticides for agriculture, pharmaceutical products, construction materials, fiber, power to transport heat and light. We built an entire civilization on carbon. So when oil starts to go over 80 a barrel, prices across the supply chain go up. At around 140 a barrel, purchasing power plummets, it shuts down. The reason? We have likely hit peak globalization on oil, according to the International Energy Agency. Probably in 2006, we hit peak global oil, crude oil, at 70 million barrels a day. Long ago, we hit peak oil per capita. So what this means is that in the last 15 years, when China and India led the developing world, a third of the human race, into the game late, the aggregate output, the increased pressure on demand against supply was just overwhelming. So what I'm suggesting to you is every time we try to regrow the economy at the same rate we were growing before 2008, prices will go up, purchasing power will go down, the engine will shut off. That's happening right now. We're at $100 for crude oil. Prices are going up across the supply chain, and we're looking for a stall in the economy. This is an end game. Growth collapse. Growth collapse. We cannot get through that wall of 150 a barrel. This is a long death throw. This industrial age based on fossil fuels will be with us for the next 30 years. The key is to make sure the old system doesn't collapse while we wean in a completely new economic paradigm. Transport will be right at the center of this for the reasons I'll talk about. The second event, December 2009, Copenhagen, 192 leaders come together from around the world to deal with the entropy bill for the industrial age. You cannot escape the second law of thermodynamics. It, it makes for the rise and fall of civilizations. So our signs say perhaps a three degree rise in temperature in this century, it could go higher. But three degrees takes us back to the temperature on Earth three million years ago in the Pliocene, different world. Our scientists say that the change in the hydrological cycle may be positioning us for the beginning of a mass extinction event, which may be there. We have had five waves of biological extinction in the last 450 million years, five wipeouts. Every time we had a mass extinction, it took 10 million years to recover the biodiversity we lost. As my wife says, we're not grasping the enormity of this moment. So our scientists say we're in the early stages of a mass extinction event again. We could lose on the upside, and I want every parent to hear this, 70% of all the species of life on this earth as early as the latter part of this century. So what do we do? Peak globalization for fossil fuel-based industrial era. We're on real-time climate change paying the bill for the industrial age. What do we do? We need a new economic vision for the world. And we need a new economic game plan for that vision that's practical, that can be implemented in less than 40 years, 
that can be implemented as quickly in the developing world as the developed world, and that will take us to biosphere consciousness. So we need to step back and ask the question, how do the great economic revolutions in history occur? They occur when, when two things happen. First, when we humans change the way we organize energy. We've had many energy regimes through history. When we create new energy regimes, they make possible much more integrated, complex civilizations. But then they require communication revolutions to manage them. When energy revolutions converge with communication revolutions, when they merge, they change gestalt, they change temporal spatial orientation, they change consciousness, and they change our transportation patterns. And the transportation patterns actually allow us to change consciousness. I'm going to give you an example. Now, first, let me put, put a frame here. For 200 years, we have misunderstood the evolution of human consciousness. Our Enlightenment philosopher said, well, human beings are born with a basic biological drive for aggression and competition. We seek autonomy, material self-interest, and individual utility in the market. We now realize they got it wrong, but unfortunately, we imprinted that idea about human nature into our schools, our business models, and our governance. In the last 15 years, our evolutionary biologists, our neurocognitive scientists have opened up whole new doors about what human nature is about. It turns out that we are the most social creature. We have the largest neocortex. And our scientists have discovered that, that built into our neural circuitry is empathic distress. And that is, for example, if a spider goes up your arm and I'm watching it, I'll get a creepy feeling as if it's going up my arm. Crocodiles don't do that. So we have built into our neural circuitry the ability to empathize, to actually feel another being, being's experience as if we are feeling it ourselves. Empathy is social glue that allows increasingly large units of people to identify and have solidarity. And as we'll see in a few minutes, it's transport that allows us to annihilate time and space so we, we integrate in these larger social units. Example, every forager hunter society in history, the energy regime was the human body. We had not yet developed animal power for transport or sailing ships. So the body was human energy, and every forager hunter society created oral language to hunt, to forage, and to groom. Consciousness was mythological without exception. And empathy, the basic human drive, only evolved to blood ties because transport was limited to the walking feet, no animal power yet. So one would empathize with blood ties, but if you were in the next tribe over there in the next mountain range, you were a non-human. When we went to the great hydraulic civilization in Sumeria, Mesopotamia, we created these very elaborate centralized irrigation agricultural systems. We indentured thousands of men to build the canals. We could create dikes, royal granaries, and then we had to put in royal roads and the first transport. So stored sun in grain was our energy. The stored sun in photosynthesis in barley, wheat, and rye, and rice. This was so complex, these hydraulic civilizations, we had to create a communication revolution to manage them. Cuneiform, writing. And everywhere we see these great hydraulic civilizations, the Middle East, the Indus Valley of Vidya, China, and Mexico, independently people create some form of writing to manage this centralized agriculture. And we went from mythological to theological consciousness. All the great religions were formed back then. And empathy extended from blood ties to a new fictional family, religious ties. Now all of a sudden all Jews think of Jews as brothers and sisters, but they're not blood related. First century Rome, Christians see other Christians as brothers and sisters and kiss on the face, but it's not blood related. The key that brings people together in more evolutionary ways is transport. As we are able to develop animal transport and sailing ships in these hydraulic civilizations, we could bring more people together across blood ties to fictional families and integrate them in larger units so they could empathize in broader ways. Thank you.